Sometimes God has to bring us through seasons of life that are very unpleasant, uncomfortable. But what He's trying to do is to get us to see there's something in you that's too big. And I'm going to deal with it. You hear Peter tonight? I'll never forsake you. And what does he do? He even uses profanity. He cusses and says twice. I don't know the man. And then walked with him for three and a half years. But aren't you glad that through that experience he goes out and weeps bitterly and God changes his heart. <laughs> Sometimes the weeping experiences of life are meant to open our hearts and our souls. God's not trying to hurt us. He's trying to help us. He's trying to conform us to His image and make us more like Him. People say, well, there's not a racist bone in my body until they get in a situation where it comes to the surface. You say, I'll never do this and such. Well, you haven't been put in the right situation yet. You don't know what you'll do. Now you can say to me, oh yes, I know what I would do if I were in that situation, but you haven't been in that situation. And you know, we judge other people so easily when they're walking through the vicissitudes of life. We look at them and say, if it were me, I would do this, and I would do this, and I would do this. You haven't been where they are. You don't know what you would do. I've had people tell me, I, I know what I'd do, and do the very opposite of what they said they would do if they ever got in that situation. And yet God uses it to change us. Not, listen, God not even, doesn't even waste your pain. The pain you walk through, say this with me, God never wastes my pain. Say it with me, God never wastes my pain. Because the only pain, if I make one statement tonight that I feel is prophetic, Write this down somewhere in your Bible. The only pain you will ever be able to heal in another is the pain you feel. The only pain you will ever be able to heal in another is the pain you feel. I remember hearing the story of a woman that lost her son at an early age. Everybody tried to help her. Everybody in the church tried to help her. They loved her. They carried her gifts. They fixed meals. It didn't work. Until one day a lady knocked on her door. And when the lady saw who was standing at the door, she broke down and began to weep. Invited her in. They had fellowship one with another. And she was set free by the power of God. But the lady that knocked on her door was a lady that had lost her son at an early age too. She couldn't receive the help from others who hadn't been where she's been. But the woman that had been where she had been, that's the woman that could help her. Her season of grief and hardship and desolation came to an end when God used somebody that had been through the same season to see deliverance in her life. Oh God. It is so easy to look at someone else's situation and point your finger and say, you ought to be doing this. And if it were me, I've seen those same people have circumstances and seasons come into their life where they were walking through desolation, a desert. And the same advice they offered wouldn't work for them. God help us to understand that we're... Do you understand that we're all at different points along the journey? 
You may be a little further up the road than I am. I may be a little further spiritually up the road than you are. But one thing is for sure. We are fellow travelers. And we're on the good ship fellowship. Amen? And can I just simply say it another way? Here's a, here's a wonderful euphemism I heard. The truth is the truth. Sometimes the ark, can you imagine what the ark must have smelled like with all of those animals on board? You ever given that any thought? All those, I mean, I can only imagine what an elephant and a buffalo would do on the ark. And to be trapped in an ark for over 150 days, it had to be a stinking mess. Sometimes the church can be a stinking mess. But I got news for you. It's still the best thing to float to. Because we're all on it together, headed to heaven. What's God called us to do? God's called us to come into spiritual alignment, prophetic alignment, with the promises made in our life. Hear me tonight. Even though you've walked through seasons of desolation, like Joseph, and I can talk to you about others. King David. Wow, what a story. Jesus himself. But the fact is, promises have been made over your life. Many of you had promises spoken over you when you were children. Sunday school teachers believed in you. People in your life, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, grandmothers, they believed in you. And they may have spoken prophetic words over you. What I'm telling you is we're coming to the day when the times of restitution are coming. Read the book of Acts. Read chapter 4, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. Jesus, the Bible said, has gone to heaven until times of restitution will come and seasons of refreshing. I'm telling you for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, getting ready for the rapture, getting, away for the snap, getting ready for the snatching away of the Lord, God's bringing all things prophetic in regards to your life in alignment and he's going to start opening the door getting us ready to be his bride. Amen? And he's going to begin pouring out in our lives. My granddad said things over me. I've had people to speak into my life that I didn't even know that said things were going to happen. You know what Miss Wanda and I are convinced of? We stayed in a church 17 years with the same thing this church has got. And there were people that would come through from all denominations and walks of life and speak words prophetically over us. And we thought it was for that king's way. I'm telling you the truth. And we didn't understand those words because they prophesied that the stage would be full of children. They prophesied we didn't even have a balcony. That the church would fill up with people who were being set free by the power of God, delivered families, brought back together again. God was going to do miraculous things. Signs and wonders would take place. Now we understand it wasn't there. It was here. Stand on your feet. Hallelujah. would you come to the keyboard? I just got to stop right there. How many believe God's got some now times for us? this together. What I'm saying is there are chronos times and kairos times. The chronos times are the general times. Those are the times we don't want to deal with because there's the everyday grind, the everyday struggles, the general times. We don't like those times. Joseph had a lot of robust time in his life where he was just trying his best to get through the day. Not understanding that God was preparing Kairos times. And what are those prophetically? They are times, they're, let's, let's put it this way, they're opportune times. 
when God will do a specific thing in your life and in your family. When a special, a special time of refreshing and healing, when heaven will open and God will pour out blessings in your life. But God's got to get you in place first. Before God could rescue the family of Joseph from Egypt, he had to position him just right. That's what he's doing. He's positioning us for Kairos times. Would you say, God, let it be so. Let it be so in our lives. Would you just begin to praise the Lord? Let the Holy Spirit pray. God, thank you that we're going to behold the glory of the Lord. We're going to behold the glory of the Lord. Would you come every... I tell you, I want to invite everybody that will come now to the altar. I believe there's some Kairos time around here tonight. There's some opportune times and opportunity. God's going to begin to stir and pour out.